Hello friends, welcome to Crazy Medicine YouTube channel. So after a gap of two years because of my neurology residency, I am back with another clinical video. In this video, we will discuss about approach to foot drop. This video will guide you step by step to understand this common condition. Don't forget to watch it till the end. So for understanding foot drop and its approach, it is necessary to understand lumbosacral plexus, which we will learn in subsequent slides. First of all, lumbar plexus. It is formed by nerves of anterior rami of L1 to L4. Each rami or nerve has anterior and posterior division. The L4 and L5 component contributes to lumbosacral plexus. Anterior division of L2, L3 and L4 forms obturator nerve and posterior division forms femoral nerve. That means both have same nerve root value. There are other nerves from both anterior and posterior divisions. Ilioinguinal nerve, iliohypogastric nerve and genitofemoral nerve apart from obturator nerve arises from anterior division. Lateral femoral cutaneous nerve or lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh arises from posterior division apart from femoral nerve. This summarizes lumbar plexus. Now coming to sacral plexus. It is formed by nerves of anterior rami of L4 to S4. Similar to lumbar plexus, each rami or nerve has anterior and posterior division. Two main nerves are peroneal division and tibial division of sciatic nerve. Peroneal component is formed by posterior division of L4 to S2 roots, whereas tibial division or component of sciatic nerve is formed by anterior division of L4 to S3 roots. Remember, tibial component has S3 root value, which is not present in peroneal component. Both nerve together forms a sciatic nerve. There are other nerves from both anterior and posterior division. Posterior cutaneous nerve arises from anterior division apart from tibial component of sciatic nerve. Superior and inferior gluteal nerves arises from posterior division apart from peroneal component. Podella nerve arises directly from anterior rami. This forms our sciatic plexus. This slide summarizes lumbosacral plexus, showing the formation of major nerves, including sciatic nerve, femoral nerve, obturator nerve, and along with other smaller but important branches. Now we will see the cause of sciatic nerve, which is important for our discussion. It goes back of the thigh and divides into two branches, the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve, just above the popliteal fossa. The tibial nerve continues down to the back of the leg. The common peroneal nerve innervates the short head of biceps femoris before dividing into two branches, that is superficial peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve. Now for understanding proper localization, we must know some important functions of compartment of thigh and legs along with its nerve supply. First of all, components of thigh. Anatomically, thigh has anterior, posterior and medial compartment. Anterior compartment includes flexors of hip, extensor of knee, which are supplied by femoral nerve. Medial compartment includes adductors of hip, which are supplied by obturator nerve. And posterior compartment includes flexors of knee, which are supplied by sciatic nerve. This concept and knowledge of anatomy is very important for understanding clinical approach. Similarly, leg has three compartments, anterior, posterior and lateral. Anterior compartment includes extensors, that is dorsiflexors of foot, which are supplied by deep peroneal nerve. Posterior compartment includes foot flexors and inverters, which are supplied by tibial division of sciatic nerve. And lastly, lateral compartment includes everters of foot, which are supplied by superficial peroneal nerve. Now let us discuss about cutaneous innervation of lower limb, below knee, which has significant localizing value. Superficial peroneal nerve has sensory innervation to enter lateral aspect of the leg along with the greater part of dorsum of the foot, except the first web space. The deep peroneal nerve is responsible for sensory innervation over the first web space of the foot, which is area between the first and second toes. Now talking about saphenous nerve, which is cutaneous continuation of femoral nerve, it is sensory supply to anteromedial knee, leg and foot as shown in the figure. Sural nerve is formed by union of branches of tibial and common perineal nerve. It has sensory supply to posterior lateral leg and lateral aspect of the foot. 
In the foot, we already discussed about sensory supply by superficial peroneal, deep peroneal, sural, and saphenous nerve. Sole of foot is mainly supplied by tibial branches, which are calcaneal branch, medial plantar nerve, and lateral plantar nerve. This completes our basic knowledge of anatomy, which will help for understanding the lesions and localization clinically. So, in case of foot drop, lesion can be any point along the pathway, from root to peripheral nerve, that is peroneal system. This includes lesion at L5, the sciatic nerve, the common peroneal nerve, and the tibial nerve. Let's now explore each of these lesions individually. First, let's look at L5 root. Motor deficits may include weakness of dorsiflexion. It is because involvement of tibiaris anterior muscle. Toe extension weakness because of EHL involvement. Hip abduction involvement because of gluteal muscle involvement, which is innervated by superior and inferior gluteal nerves. And sensory deficits will involve loss in L5 dermatome, as shown in the figure. Additional feature of root lesion include a positive straight leg rising test and a normal ankle jerk as S1 nerve root is paired. Next, we consider a lesion at sciatic nerve, continuing our approach from top to bottom. Motor deficit will include weakness in knee flexion because of hamstring involvement, weakness in dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, and toe extension from the involvement of both tibial and peroneal nerves, foot eversion weakness due to involvement of peroneus longus and brevis, which are supplied by superficial peroneal nerve. A key point to differentiate this from root lesion is pairing of hip abduction, which are supplied by superior and inferior gluteal nerves, which are not involved here, means the gluteal muscles are spared. The sensory deficit will involve areas innervated by peroneal, tibial and sural nerves, as sural nerve also receives a component from common peroneal nerve. Next, let's look at the lesion involving common peroneal nerve. Motor deficit will include weakness in dorsiflexion of foot, that is foot drop, due to tibialis anterior involvement, weakness in toe extension because of EHL weakness, weakness in foot eversion due to peroneus involvement, and plantar flexion here remains unaffected as tibial component or tibial nerve function is intact. Sensory deficits will affect areas innervated by both superficial and deep peroneal nerves. Here, another key feature will be the injury may result from trauma at fibular head or from prolonged leg positioning, that is, during surgery or prolonged sitting. A positive tineal sign at fibular head may be present. Finally, coming to tibial nerve involvement, which is relatively rare in isolation. Motor deficits typically involve weakness in plantar flexion due to involvement of gastrocnemius and soleus, weakness in toe flexion because of weakness of flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus and weakness in foot inversion due to tibialis posterior involvement. Sensory deficit present as loss of sensation in the sole of foot and posterior cuff that is area innervated by tibial nerve and its branches. A key feature of tibial nerve injury is difficulty with heel walking and this injury results from trauma or compression or pathology involving popliteal fossa that is from tumors or Becker cyst. Now this table provides comprehensive summary of lesions we have covered, including those at L5 root, sciatic nerve, common peroneal nerve and tibial nerve. It outlines the motor and sensory deficits associated with each lesion. Now what can be our practical approach with respect to motor deficit in patients with clinical history suggestive of involvement of lumbosacral plexus and its components? So if there is dorsiflexion weakness, that is foot drop, the lesion could be at the deep peroneal nerve, common peroneal nerve, sciatic now, lumbosacral plexus or L5 root. This broad list is our starting point. So along with dorsiflexion weakness, if there is involvement of foot eversion, this point suggests there is involvement of superficial peroneal nerve. At this stage, we can rule out isolated deep peroneal nerve involvement and move one step higher, that is removing the deep peroneal from the list. Now along with that, if foot inversion and knee flexion are weak, it suggests involvement of tibial nerve and the sciatic nerve proper. This step eliminates the common peroneal nerve as a potential cause, further narrowing our focus. If there is weakness in gluteal muscles, we note that sciatic nerve does not supply these muscles. Hence, the lesion must be above the sciatic nerve, allowing us to rule out sciatic nerve and focus on lumbosacral plexus or root lesion. This further narrows down our diagnosis to root or plexus involvement, which can be identified through history and confirmed by imaging.
In my friends, this slide only includes causes involving lumbosacral plexus. Practically, there are many potential causes of foot drop, like motor neuron disease and certain other neuropathies. This slide is designed to help you understand and localize the lesion and make understanding properly. A similar approach can be applied to sensory involvement when evaluating the patient. If there is sensory loss at the first web space, the lesion could be anywhere from deep peroneal nerve, common peroneal nerve, sciatic nerve, plexus or roots. This provides an initial broad differentials. Along with that, if there is sensory involvement on the dorsum of the foot and lateral calf, this suggests involvement of superficial peroneal nerve. At this point, we can rule out isolated deep peroneal nerve involvement as we move a step higher in our diagnostic process. If sensory loss is noted at the lateral knee and sole of the foot, this points to involvement of sural and tibial nerve. This step further narrows down the possibilities eliminating common peroneal nerve from our list. Along with above findings, if there is sensory loss at posterior thigh, this suggests involvement of posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh which is located above the sciatic nerve. Therefore, we can rule out sciatic nerve as a potential cause. A further diagnostic test involving plexus and L5 can be carried out clinically with confirmation through imaging and other diagnostic modalities like nerve conduction studies and EMG testing. Clinically, it is crucial to take thorough history, examine both motor and sensory component together and correlate the finding to narrow down the diagnosis. Once we have reached the clinical diagnosis or hypothesis, imaging studies and now conduction studies and electromyography can be used to confirm the diagnosis. Now if you find our video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more clinical and conceptual content. Your support helps the channel to grow and reach more learners and professionals like you.